Hi folks, in this video I'll be answering another past paper question on relationships. We'll be drawing graphs, calculating the gradient of a best fit line and using that gradient to calculate the density of a liquid. And because it's higher physics, we'll be doing all of that using an equation that's not in the relationship sheet. The question is from the 2018 CFE higher paper and it goes like this. A student sets up an experiment to investigate the pressure due to a liquid as shown. The pressure due to a liquid is given by the relationship P is equal to rho GH. As I said before, this relationship isn't in the relationship sheet, but it used to be when pressure due to a liquid was part of the course. But what do all those symbols mean, I hear you ask? Well, lowercase p is the pressure due to the liquid in pascals, g is the gravitational field strength in newtons per kilogram, rho, that's a letter in the Greek alphabet, is the density of the liquid in kilograms per cubic metre, and H is the depth in the liquid in metres. What happens in the experiment is that the glass tube is moved downwards in the liquid and the pressure is measured at several depths below its surface. Here's part A of the question. The student initially carries out the investigation using water. The density of water is 1.00 times 10 to the power of 3 kilograms per cubic metre. Calculate the pressure due to the water at a depth of 0.35 metres. Now the whole point of this question is to see how well you can manipulate unfamiliar equations. And this one's fairly straightforward. The only thing we'll have to do here is look up the value of g in the data sheet at the front of the exam and plug it into the equation along with the other values. No rearranging required. So if we get a bit of space, we can write our equation, then substitute our values, giving a pressure equal to 1.00 times 10 to the power of 3 times 9.8 times 0.35 which is equal to 3.4 times 10 to the power of 3 pascals. Next up, it's the bit we all love. To hate. Drawing a graph. Part B says the student repeats the experiment with a different liquid. The pressure meter is set to zero before the glass tube is lowered into the liquid. The student takes measurements of the pressure at various depths below the surface of the liquid. The student records the following information. Using the square ruled paper on page 43, draw a graph of P against H. It also says that if you mess up your graph, that there's another piece of graph paper in the page after that, although not in those exact words. Bring on the graph paper, or square ruled paper as they're calling it here for some reason, and let's have some more space. We'll start all the way down at the bottom with a scale on the x-axis. Since we're asked to graph P against H, P, the first thing mentioned, should be on the y-axis and h, the second thing mentioned, should be on the x-axis. The highest value of depth h is 0 0.50, so if we want to scale the increases by equal increments each major grid line, in other words, goes up by the same amount each big box, then it makes sense to use this scale. We'll also need a label together with the units. The maximum value of pressure is 6.2 kilopascals, so this is the most suitable scale for the y-axis. Don't just take my word for it, print off the question from the 2018 paper and try the graph yourself. Again, we'll need a label and units on the y-axis too. I know you can't quite see them fully, but you will soon. Our next step is to plot the points, and you should be doing this with a small x rather than a dot, as it'll be easier to see the x's once you draw the best fit line, whereas a small dot could easily be drawn over and lost forever. The poor thing. Let's take a look at our handiwork then. Beautiful. Now, if we move that down a bit, we can see all the points and can draw our best fit line. So, what do you reckon? Is the best fit line going to be a straight line or a curve? Press your buttons now. That's right, it's a straight line. Bring on the ruler. Now, if only that was a see-through ruler it'd be far easier to judge where that line should be drawn. Thank you so much. What you want then is a straight line which follows the trend of the points you've plotted. Move your ruler about and try to get roughly as many points above the line as below it. Something like this would do. So, if you've lost count, that was B part 1. Here's part 2. Calculate the gradient of your graph. To do that, we use this equation but it's important to use two points in the best fit line and they don't necessarily need to be data points. Luckily for us, these two points are on the line, so we'll use them. We can then substitute the x and y values of the two points into the equation like so. 
Notice that I've substituted the y values, that's pressure, in pascals rather than kilopascals because the pascal is the SI unit of pressure. That gives us an answer of 12,333 or 12,000 pascals per metre. The marking scheme for this question allows you to leave out the units for the gradient, but I've written them in. Since the gradient was calculated by dividing pressure in pascals by depth in metres, it's not difficult to work them out. The final answer was written to two significant figures since it was calculated using pressure and depth values which were also written to two significant figures. Here's B part 3, which asks us to determine the density of the liquid. If you've not realised it by now, each new part of the question tends to rely on the answer to the previous part. B part 2 asked us to calculate the gradient of the graph we drew in B part 1, so the answer to B part 3 will no doubt be related to the gradient we've just calculated. Here's the equation we started with at the beginning of the question, and here's the equation of a straight line. y is equal to mx plus c. Remember that in our graph, we plotted pressure p on the y-axis and depth h on the x-axis. That must mean that rho g is the gradient of the graph. Since in our equation, rho g is multiplied by h, just as gradient m is multiplied by x in the top equation. It's worth noting as well, that since the graph of pressure against depth is a straight line which would pass through the origin, if we continued it to that point, the value of c, the y-axis intercept, is zero, which is why there's no additional term in the bottom equation. Back to our answer then. Since we know that the gradient of our graph is equal to rho g, and we calculated gradient to be 12,000, we can write this. To calculate density, rho, we just divide both sides by g, where G is gravitational field strength, 9.8 newtons per kilogram. That gives a density of 1,224 kilograms per cubic metre, or to two significant figures, 1,200 kilograms per cubic metre, which you could also write as 1.2 times 10 to the power of 3 kilograms per cubic metre. And I'm afraid that's us. If you've enjoyed the video, and why wouldn't you? With all that fancy animation and super duper graph drawing, then maybe you'll want to subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon to be made aware when new videos come out. For more information about the channel and other resources that'll help you with your study of physics, visit physics-podcast.co.uk. Thank you for listening.